In this video, I'm now going to demonstrate and take you through how you can set up and work with a document that you created in Google Docs that is stored in the Google Drive. So to begin here, what I have here is I have, I'm working in my drive and for most of my courses, I make a folder specifically for the course. Within this, I have subfolders that help me organize as far as things like the syllabus, projects, any content, uh, activities, etc. However, for this demonstration, I have a couple that I'd like to show you. One of which is a project layout, and number two is having a document where I mapped out for students, uh, in this case, how to install WordPress. Now, I'm gonna go ahead here, and the learning management system I'm gonna use is Blackboard. So inside of Blackboard here, some of the things you will want to do is you are going to want to build content. Now, when you're working with an external document such as a Google Doc here that's stored in your Google Drive, you're going to want to go to Web Link. Now remember, when working with Web Link, if I click on this, you still have the opportunity that you can add a text description here. Normally, what I like to do for my students is under the name, this is completely up to you, but I like to make a note for the students of what type of document will they be opening. So for instance here, I'll say Google Doc and maybe I'll say installing WordPress with XAMP. And then under the text, I might have something here. Students should review the following document to learn more about installing WordPress. Now, the final element is the URL here, and that's the part that is important whenever you're working with your document from Google Drive. So let me go ahead and go back here to the WordPress document. You do not want to copy and paste what is up here in your browser bar. Instead, what you wanna do is over on the right-hand side where your icon is for your account, right next to it is a share button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the share button and you can see here that it pops up as far as some information about how can you share this document. By default, you could just add specific people if you wanted to. However, because I wanna add it to an overall class, and then be able to roll it over into future classes, I wanna come down here and get the link. Now, before I actually click on anything, right below here, there is, under anyone on the internet with this link can view, there is a change option. I like to click on this just to double check. What it'll show you is the actual link you will want to copy, but notice, here you have additional options here. So for instance, anyone with the link, it is literally that. They can view as far as the internet is concerned. On the other hand, restricted goes back up to this share with people in group. What you're saying here is that only the people you specifically add to this document can view it. For a classroom setup, we do not want to use restricted. We want to allow our students, any of the students, to be able to view this link. Now, since Blackboard is not publicly accessible via the web, we're able to do this. And the last thing I wanna point out is all the way on the right-hand side, there are three options here. Honestly, for most directions, most documentation that you want students to read, you want to leave this on viewer. Commenter is just that. This could be a great option that if you wanna have an interactive element as far as having students add to a document or add to a Google slide, they can actually come in and make changes and add their thoughts. Editor, the last one gives full access. This is where students can add things, delete things, they can interact with other things that people have done. And one thing to point out too is I like to use the editor option uh, as far as if a file is too large, for instance, to upload to Blackboard. 
I'll often make a project folder that students can just drag and drop their projects into. So for this demonstration here, I'm going to use Viewer. This is probably going to be the most common one. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the link. You'll get a pop-up here that says link copied. Coming back to Blackboard, under URL, I'm going to paste with Control V. And then coming down here, it's going to open in a new window. If you want to, the age old, you can track the number of views, set your dates and restrictions. And I'm going to go ahead and submit. So this is what your student is going to see here. And when they click, even if they don't have a Gmail account, it will open up and show the document to them. Normally what will happen is you will have a bunch of icons appearing here. The Google likes to make it a little cute, like anonymous otter, anonymous uh, bird, anonymous cat. So students can't actually see who else is viewing the project. Likewise, one other way I want to show you is what if you're using a project and you want to be able to just link to your rubric. So coming back under the course modules here, I'll choose assignment. And we'll go ahead and we will call this project one. Now normally what I like to do here is I will add that same information here, Google Doc rubric for project one here. But what I'm gonna do is I highlight it. I like to make it a little bit larger. I'll actually go in and do a bold on it. And then on my menu bar here, I will locate as far as the little chain link to create a link. So now it's asking me again for the URL. I have the text highlighted that I want to use. So once again, I'm going to come back to my Google Doc in my drive, and I'm going to go ahead and share. I'm going to click on change just to double check. And whoop, you can see this is actually set to editor. I want to change this over to viewer. The permission has been updated. So now I'm ready to copy that link and come back over and go ahead and paste. And for a lot of these, you want to make sure this is an easy spot to skip. You want to make sure you're opening the link in a new window. That way you're not having the student navigate away from the Blackboard site. And then I'll go ahead and save it. And now I can set, you know, a specific due date. I'll just choose that. I can still set, you know, my point values and I'll say, you know, unlimited attempts, go through all the stuff here and say submit. And now here again, not only do the students still have access to be able to click and come in to upload their project, but now they can click on the project one and now they can see this rubric. Again, the big reason that you would want to do something like this is let's say for this rubric now, let me go back to the original. Maybe I realize uh, I need to add something here, maybe like WordPress site for commercial company. Maybe I decide in a future class that I need to make this more descriptive. Now, if I come back in here and let me cancel out, students come in and review the rubric, you see how the update has already happened. Instead of having to go in to the content management system and edit the actual content, I now have this one external spot that I can go in and make the change.